What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to our Throne of Eldraine set review. I'm here with Rob. You said welcome back. Because they're watching a new video. Okay. Right, welcome. How many chocolates are you going to have today? I've had four since, had, I've, no, there since I found the them. Kid, there were two wrappers I threw out, and that's the reason. I've, found, I've had five <laughs> since I found them about 18 minutes <laughs> so ago. I understate by <laughs> one just to make it a little easier on myself. <laughs> oh, Lord. And we're going to do our Throne of Eldraine set review. It's going to be two parts. First part is going to be white, blue, black, and lands. Second part is going to be... I'm going to stop because you're doing that. Second part is going to be red, green, gold, and and, and artifacts. Colorless artifacts. Why are you... No, stop. You have <laughs> All right, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Right, we eased them in there. Either way, you can find me every week at Wednesday on uh, coolstuffinc.com. You can also check out manatraders.com. Uh, the link is in the description. You'll get 20% off the first three months of any subscription. And uh, acclaimed contender. What do you think about this guy? Oh, hold on. Uh, you can find me here on Fridays sometimes. Yeah. When he doesn't have sports ball with his Sports children. ball. Sports ball. <laughs> All right, let's do it. I have liners in right now. I'm going to take them out, guys. It's yeah. going to be super weird. You ready? Yeah. You have an accent. It's weird when you got them in. Did I really? No. That's weird. I thought I would. Hmm. Oh, God. Look at it. Look. Look at what's happening, guys. Oh, God. Okay. Whoa. What? That's beautiful. Because these are new, I had to put these. I put this tray in last night, so they're still kind of rough. So it kind of just hurts, and I'm doing a lot of talking. So Shanala just said, "Can we have a tally for how many cards Rob doesn't or misreads?" You're right. Acclaimed contender. They are Urbana. regular. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're right. They've been here before. <laughs> um, uh, I turned the camera off for so many things, but never that. Just because it's not like it's not like blowing my nose or like it's just it doesn't seem like it's that offensive. I don't know. If it is, let me know. I apologize if it's super offensive and I just didn't. I underestimated it, but I just thought it was a... I like watching it. Okay. Um, I also just think, they think a lot of people know how liners work, so it's funny when I take them out, because people are like, oh, that's interesting. i never seen those before. I just think that's kind of like a... When a claimed contender enters the battlefield, if you control another knight, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reel a knight, aura, equipment, or legendary artifact. That is a lot of things. Uh, from among them, put it into your hand, and the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. Three, three for three. This reminds you of, like, Militia Bugler, right? It's just better, right? It's a 3-3 three, three for 3. In a night deck, yeah. Yeah. I mean, not in general, because, like, Militia Beagle gets any creature. This is, gets a very specific no, it doesn't. card type. Does it? No, it has to have a mana cost of 3 mana, or less. A mana cost is of 3 or less? A mana cost is of 3 or less. That's crazy. Yeah. I didn't even that know. Card's, this card's really good. I think it's going to be and a, a three, standard. And it's a 3-3 for 3. Yeah, on rate. Yeah. And it's a knight. I mean, it's going to be a standard staple. It feels I think. like uh, Knight Ranger of Eos. Mm -hmm. Is that the guy's name from Modern Horizons? Yeah. That gets you a 1-drop? Yeah. Only it seems better, right? No, because you can't search. This is a but standard you, you, version. Yes, but like you're you're not limited to like a one drop. You got like anything you want out of these like five different card types. It's not searching, but like it's you're not strictly better. But you can find depending on how well better. you build your deck. Like you're almost always going to hit something with these. Oh, you're almost always going to hit something because of everything you can hit. That's what I'm, that's yeah. my point, right? Yeah. No, we're not talking about Ranger Eos. We're talking about the new one from Modern Horizons. Yeah, it's a three mana three three that searches for a one drop. Correct. Yeah. No, it's not Captain Ranger either. Uh, it's 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 combining Knight Captain of Eos and Ranger of Eos. I think it's Knight Captain of Eos. Ranger Captain of Eos. Knight Captain of it's. I'm just gonna look up Eos as a card and see what Eos comes up. Knight Captain of Eos. Nope. Ranger Captain. It's of Ranger Eos. Captain. There, yeah. Okay, Nailed you said it. Captain Ranger. That's okay. Did I? No, not. I'm just. I'm reading chat. I'm in oh. the chat. I'm mm -hmm. having a good time. Ah. All that glitters. Two mana enchanted creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one plus one for each artifact and or enchantment you control. It's a standard version of uh, what call It's pretty sweet. The candy bar. What call it? No. Um. Boggles. What's the Boggles card? It's a one mana. Ethereal armor. Yeah. That's literally what it is. It's I mean, actually better because it's artifact too. Right, but it's also but worse because it costs two. two. Right. So yeah. it's. I mean, it's yet to be seen if this does anything to standard, but it's a cool card. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's not underpowered. I don't know. This card's scary with hexproof creatures, right? Like, Sure. We'll see how many exist. Archon of Absolution. Four mana for a 3-2. Protection from white with flying. Man, they're just throwing protection on everything now, aren't they? I don't like protection, personally. I don't either. I think it's. Uh, I think it just sways matchups pretty lopsided. It makes things pretty lopsided. I think hexproof is the good version of protection. Like the the okay version protection is just too much creatures can't attack you or a planeswalker you control unless their controller pays one for each of those creatures this card is awesome i like this card a lot it's, so it's a three two flyer so it attacks well it's really good against 
if there's green white token strategies. So it's like a half half ghostly prism. Yeah, um, that's weird because this and this feels rare almost. That's an uncommon. And this feels this feels mythic almost. Uh, I don't know about mythic. Okay, so here's the thing. Show me the thing. Ranger Captain of Eos was a three three for three. It was mythic. And all it does is you get one creature with one or less cost. This is almost guaranteed to find you like a legendary equipment or something. They're both drawing you a card. They're both three three for three. This is easier to cast. But this is rare and Ranger Captain of Eos was mythic. And like Well, one's on a lion. The other one's on a horse. I guess that's that's, that's probably, the difference that's, between rare is, and, is, and mythic, honestly. That's, yeah, that's probably the difference, actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This card's fine. I wish it wasn't four mana, but I mean, it still does. Four mana is good. Things. Good rate for standard, right? If that was a three mana three two flyer with pro white and really taxed everything, kill, like you just like shock it. No one wants. No one's gonna play this. That'll that, that's a sideboard card. If a if a blue green deck or uh, green white deck exists, that's a sideboard card. Ard Ardenvale Ardenvale. I imagine Ardenvale is a uh, a common term we're gonna see. Ardenvale Paladin four mana for a two five. Adamant is an interesting ability, and it kind of... If you guys read my article on Cool Stuff, Inc., um, about my Throne, Throne of Eldrain thoughts, it kind of references uh, Theros a lot. Like, it has a real mm-hmm. Theros feel to it, because it's forcing you to play, like, a bunch of the same colored mana. <clears throat> uh, if at least three white mana was spell, spent to, to cast this, it gets uh, plus one, plus one counter. So it's a three, six if you if you do white, 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 and one. Yep. Okay. I mean, limited card. Yep. Ardenvale Tactician. See what I said about Ardenvale? Oh, Three mana for a two three, or you can play the adventure half, tap up to two target creatures. I'm a big fan of the adventure mechanic. I think it's great. I think it gives you options with your cards. It forces you. One of the things I noticed when I was playing courtside brawl on MTG Arena was that like when you have an adventure card in your hand, you're either torn between wanting to cast the creature and making sure you can get damage in and putting pressure on the board, or you're like, do I just save it and get the value out of the the instant half? The cool part that I enjoyed when I played that was you can plan ahead for what we're, what you're trying to play. And you're like, okay, I have time to use this as an adventure. I can get the full value out of it. And then your opponent does something, and now you're like, oh, crap, I have to play it as a creature. Like, it leads to different lines of play. Um, it, it's it's like a tree that branches, you know. That's, what, that's my point, yeah. yeah. So, it, like, it, like, there could be games where you're like, you play this guy early, but then your opponent plays, like, two big creatures, and you wish you had the adventure half. Yeah, yep. Um, so, like, if you play the adventure half first, you get both sides. Because then, then later you can play the creature. But if you play the creature first, you can't go back and play the adventure half as well so yep. um it's literally like a left to right thing you can play it from left to right and once you play the right side you don't <clears> actually get to go back yep um it's a really interesting mechanic i like it a lot it runs you like flashback or kicker but um which that's actually kind of a cool flavor um because it's left to right astron in the chat saying wow robert gets his own microphone very special oh my god <laughs> Oh my god. Yes, Oof. yes. Hey babe. If we were sharing microphones, that'd be super weird. Hey babe. Bartered cow, four mana for a three three. When <laughs> bartered cow dies or when you discard it, create a food token. Cool. I mean for limited it's great. So four four a three three for four, which is fine, and you get something else. Mm. Mm. Beloved princess. Oh, uh, she's in chat. This is what Rob is. What? One one for one with lifelink. It can't be blocked by creatures power three or greater. And they're like, Alright, I'll block with my two two. And you're like <laughs> That works. All right. See you later. Or my 2-5. Right into the garbage can. Read the flavor. At the market, no one heeded Hilda's frantic mooing. The fey curse was turning out even worse than she had feared. It didn't touch me in a way I thought I was going to be touched. Is that the one? That's really sad. Mm. I'm not feeling it. That mm. sounds really sad. Is that... <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much for the sub. Really appreciate it. You are awesome. Just so anyone, everyone knows on the video, that's my wife. It's a person? <laughs> oh, jeez. This is... What? What do you mean it's a person? Charming Prince. Two mana for a 2-2. Two, two. When it enters the battlefield, choose one. Scry two. You gain three life. Exile another creature you own or return to the battlefield at the next end step. So Flicker Wisp. Um, this card seems great. This card... I thought this was uncommon at first, which I think was, would be fine, but... This card will see play in Modern. It's just too versatile not to. Yeah, it's so good. It's it's. If, I mean, there were decks where I wanted to play Lone Missionary just because it's Soul like, Herder. Hey, it comes into play. It's four life. It's it's Soul Herder. It, it it's Soul Herder. Like it's perfect for Soul Herder. I mean, I don't I don't mean it's Soul Herder. Soul Herder. Soul Herder. It's Soul Herder. It's, it's perfect solder. for Soul Herder. Solder. He said it like five times. It was amazing. This card's sweet. I think this card is great. Um, I think just the amount of options you have. Yeah. Like scrying Wait, two is sick. 
If you have two... Oh, because it... You know, it's funny because it actually has to be exile a creature and return at the end step because otherwise two of them would just blink each yeah, other infinitely. infinitely. Mm-hmm. The Circle of Loyalty. This is where Ooh. I let Rob into whenever Ooh. we uh, whenever we hang out. Six mana, legendary artifact. This spell costs one less for each knight you control. So let's say on turn one you play a knight, on turn two you play a knight. You can't play this on turn three because it's still going to cost four. Uh, if you play another knight on turn three, you can play it on four and it would cost <clears> three. <throat> Like depending on how you curve out, like you could you could potentially get this down on turn three if you played knight knight knight, like one on one and then two on two. Uh, creatures you control get plus one plus one, not just knights. Pretty versatile. Whenever you cast a legendary spell, create a two two white knight creature token with vigilance, and then you can just pay tap four and it to create a two two white knight creature token with vigilance. This card's amazing. This card's really good. Um, why don't you pull your notepad up so we can revisit the cards like we used to that were good? That's a good idea. I yeah. like that. Yeah, we can go. Oh, we have a bunch now. Yeah, we have like three already. I think. Circle, uh, Charming Prince, and Avondale, the three mana knight that lets you search for something else. I'm going to go back through them just to make sure, and we can just start from the beginning. Not Rob's not a claimed contender. contender. Yeah, I was like, that doesn't sound right. <clears throat> and then if I would, I would put the okay, claimed was good. All the glitters is it's fine. This one, but put the put sideboard next to it. That way we can at least discuss it. Archon of Absolution. Okay. And now we're all set up for that. Uh, nope, nope, nope. Poor nope. cow. Yes. And was I gonna say something else? Oh, we're on the next one. This yeah. is what we're on. So the thing about this is like it's nice because it's like very, it's a very like mastery of the unseen card. Mm-hmm. Control decks love cards like this because you can just put them in your control deck and you have a late game win condition. Mm-hmm. It's a great mana sink. It's a it's a thing to do with four mana. You're making three threes because as long as this is in play, uh, the knights have plus one plus one and they have vigilance, so like it's their defensive. This card is fantastic. Yep. Deafening Silence. Um, yeah, this is another great sideboard card. Yeah, this card. This card is immediately going to go see play in modern, and possibly, possibly in older in uh, Legacy too. Oh, I hit the wrong button. Um, so someone in chat, who was it? Um, Selena Gomez Prime said a lot of cards might seem modern playable, but they only are if they fit into a current deck. So yeah, I don't, I don't think it's very normal. It's can you think of a standard card that created a mod like created a modern deck I, I can't off the top of my head no but i know it's got to be something right like, no, i'm sure they come along but i mean i think say me saying like you know that's modern playable it's because it, it, it can fit into decks collect a company that's a good one yeah there, there's one that kind of spawned its own i mean this is just rule of law for one mana right like no one yeah. ever no one ever cared about uh, casting creature, multiple creature spells with a rule of law. They're just playing it against like storm decks. Right, but the key is so you have like Abzan Company decks or like Vizier decks that can sideboard this versus Storm. Right, and now they have an answer to that, and they still and they can continue to cast right. multiple creatures off of their Dusk Watch recruiters. Yes, right. yep. Fairy Godmother, one one for one. Uh, the sorcery half says target creature gets plus two plus one and gains flying. It is a sorcery, so it's not a combat trick, but it's easy to use. Like you can use this on turn two and then play the fairy itself on turn three, but it's still just a one one for one. So. Yeah. Flutter Fox, that's a little cutie. Two two for two. As long as you control an artifact or enchantment has flying, that seems that seems great. Look at the size of those wings on his legs. Yeah, that's, but look at him though. Like, how does he fly like that? I don't know because it feels like your front half would just fall to the ground. <laughs> yeah, it would just flop down it's in the extreme back. Extreme core strength. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, great card for limited. It's two two for two. Has flying if you got a thing. Yep. Fortifying provisions. Three mana for an enchantment. Creatures you control get plus o plus one. When it enters the battlefield, create a food token. Um, I don't know. Boop. The, the the effect is not good enough, and I don't think one food is really where I'm where I'm trying to be. I mean, I don't unless you're using food for something. Let's be honest, food is not clues. Unless it's not that of, good. Unless there's a lot of XXs in the format, like three threes, two twos, and you're trying to break parity, so <clears throat> yours are three fours and two threes. Like I think that's fine, but I think it really depends on the uh, the symmetry of power and toughness in this limited format, because obviously no one's looking at this for constructed. Giant Killer, one mana for a one-two. It's a good stat. Squire stats. Uh, destroy a creature with power four or greater. Uh, also fine for three mana at an instant. So it's just reprisal. Yep. And then two and a tap. Tap any creature, not just non-knight, not a non-human. This should be a knight. Any creature. This should be a knight. Yeah. Th- like when we were looking, he hasn't hit knighthood yet. <laughs> it's a one-two. Like a, a knight's not going to be a one-two because that's a, like a squire. Sure. Which is funny because it's literally that makes sense. it's one-two. You know, I never it's thought like, of it that way. That makes sense. That's like cool. it hasn't made knighthood yet. This is like this. This is like I feel like this is this is the card that's like on his way to knighthood, right? Like it's earning its its knighthood, its knight, its knight knightedness. I don't mm-hmm. know. I don't. You know. Mm. You know what I'm saying? No, I don't. 
but it's a good card. Like this card seems great. Like it's a great one drop. It's a great if, if you draw if it on mono like, white aggro is a thing. If humans is a thing, there, or something. I feel like there's always a mono white deck, and like yeah. there's so many knights in this set, and so many good like support cards. <clears throat> I'm gonna put giant killer on the list. Did we miss anything? No. Might as well get ready to type again though. Oh, is this one good? Glass yep. casket. I don't even think I've seen this one. Two mana for an artifact. Oh, is there a cat in there? L little baby. Uh, when glass casket enters the battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls with a converted mana cost three or less until it leaves. It. Oh, it's just silk wrap. Yep. Yeah, it's still good. Yep. That will see play. I it's mean, just baffling, an in, baffling yeah. in saw play. It will see play. It's just an art. Well, yeah, yeah. It's just an artifact. Yeah, it's just a. Yeah, it's an just an artifact. Silk wrap. Okay. Happily ever after. God, this card is so wordy. There's so much going on. Three mana for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, each player gains each player gains five life and draws a card. You do and I do. We both get we both get three life. Fair. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are five colors among permanents you control, not that hard because it doesn't have to be like like you can have like a three color card and two color card. Uh, if there are six or more card types among permanents you control, that's hard. And or cards in your graveyard, that's easier. And your life total is greater than or equal to your starting life total, you win the game. This just has a lot going on. <laughs> like, this bugs me because, like, I feel Sorry. like you're checking every turn. You're going to be like, hold on, what's your life total? 20. So there's one card that um, is in standard right now that actually kind of it cohesive with this. Mm -hmm. Planner-wide celebration, which is funny because this card is called Happily Ever After. Why is that funny? Well, because planner-wide, well, be, because there, it's a, it's a planner-wide celebration for the Happily Ever After. Planner-wide celebration gains you life. It can create uh, tokens of every color. I bet you didn't know it did that, did you? I didn't, I didn't care. Okay. Well, just it works with this. It works with this card. Hmm. It doesn't. It doesn't automatically win you the game, but it's it's a big chunk of getting there. I'm not saying it's good. Sounds like what you're saying. This deck will be. This card will be in a deck that's, that's miserable, miserable to play, play against. against. I don't, I'm not going to put it. But I no, don't, no. I don't think it's like. It's cute. It's one of the cute cards in the set that people are going to build around. I don't know how I feel about Harmonious Archon. Six mana for a 4-5 flyer. Non-Archon creatures, which that's all of them, guys. Just, just you know, it's pretty much all of them. Have base, power, and toughness 3-3. Three, three. When Harmonious Archon enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one white human creature tokens that are obviously 3-3s. Three, so it's 10 power, but as soon as they go just, like, kill this... I mean, you spent six mana on two 1-1s, one, essentially. So I'm not sure how good this is. This card seems really good. Does it seem that good? Yeah. Six mana for for a four or five flyer. It just it has a cloud goat ranger feel, but like you get so, fewer so bodies. You, you play six mana, okay? Wait. Your upside is you have a four or five flyer, and that you have ten you have ten power on the battlefield across three bodies. Right. Okay. The downside is they use a removal spell on it, and you still netted two one ones. That's not bad. It's not. It's not terrible. This card seems really good. I think this is this is this is pretty. This is a really good card. See, I in think. the chat is, is exactly is exactly where you want to be in any kind of set review. Where someone says, "Archon is good and limited, not so good and constructed." The next person says, "This card is really good." So there could be no beats. Could I don't know. Be a like I look hit. at Trostani, which is a five mana thing that does the same thing, but all, you know it has all his life link. Like it's given plus one plus one. Like I don't know. I think the card's good. Curving, curving Trostani into this is pretty nasty. I'm just imagining the situation where they they kill this on the spot and then you have two one ones for hold six on. Mana. So if you go, I mean that's the same thing for Trostani though. Yet Trostani's playable. It's five mana. I don't know. But, I don't know. Maybe hey, I'm being silly. Think think about this. You go turn five Trostani, right? Then you go turn six. You play this card. You end up with a board. If you have nothing else on board, you end up with one, two, three, four, five, five, three threes. I'm sorry, five four fours. I'm sorry, and a five six flyer. That's pretty insane. I mean, in the perfect world, right? Like in the perfect sure, situation. but I mean that's Hushbringer. Oh, you want to move? I did. Okay, Which, so we 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 know. We get put it, it on man. the list because I'm telling you, this card is going to be played. Did you put it on the list? It's on there. Can I check? Can I check? All right, it's on there, guys. I'm not a liar, man. Sorry. Hushbringer, two mana for a one-two flying lifelink. Creatures entering the battlefield or dying don't cause abilities to trigger. Why is this card? Why is this thing? What is uh? What do you think this card saying? You look at this card. You tell me what it says. Uh, I think it's saying that I don't want, I don't want any of the the elementals decks to be a thing in the current standard because they're miserable to play against. I think what it's saying is get your tiny hand off my lip. Or what if it's saying put your tiny hand back on my lip? Or, yeah, it could it could be saying I love it when your tiny hand's on my lip. 
This art is so weird because it's like it's half so illustration and half like really like these like lips, realism. These lips are so weird, dude. Like it's just Oh like, my god, those are little lips. Yeah, I didn't even like, notice. It's a really surreal piece of art That's that doesn't so look weird. anything like like if you look at like look you got like like this into like this and you're just like this looks like it's from an 80s new wave video. I feel like that thing's touching me. I look at that and I I'm feeling touched. That's not a- like in a physical way, not in an emotional way. Night of I also put this this is the this card is fantastic. Flying yeah. and lifelink for a one two with with shutting off both enters the battlefield and dying triggers is nuts. <clears throat> um I put this definitely on the sideboard cards that it's gonna definitely see some play. <laughs> uh Knight of the Keep, three two for three. Oh, Linden well. the Steadfast Queen. Three mana for a three, three vigilance. She's a legendary creature. Whenever a white creature you control attacks, you gain one life. This just doesn't seem it depends on decks, right? It's mo- if you if you have a mono white knights deck, it's hundred percent. Well, it's not even a knight. No, though. no, but it could be a Johnny Pride mate. I guess you never know. A Johnny Pride mate was played for I a little bit. I don't like the creature type. The mana cost is very restrictive. It's weird. She's legendary, so I don't want that many of them, so I don't have to draw them. A three three for three is literally just pretty standard. Like it's not like a super powerful stat. Um, it's just Centaur Courser, which is like limited fine. <laughs> Um, and it has to be a white creature that attacks. Like, I feel like everything, every aspect of this card is just a little bit underwhelming, right? Like, I wish it was a knight. I wish she was a three, four for three. I wish her mana cost wasn't so restricted. I wish, I wish she had another. Like, are you done? I wish it was when any, whenever a creature you control attacks. Like, I don't know. Like, will I ever play this over Banalish Marshall? Probably not. That's true. I don't know. It's just like it's. I think it's fine. I think it's necessary for the set. It's a, it's a, it's a. She's a character in Throne of Eldraine and the in Throne of Eldraine. So they gave her a cool, like dress. Plus, here's the thing: it's triple white in the mana cost. So for devotion, when Theros comes around, it's going to be relevant, you know. Mm. So. Oh, Marshall rotates out. Yeah, well, it rotates out of Diamond Air. But like, my point is that like, I, it's not like you're, you're. If you had these battling, right? Each other. Like, if I had them both, I'm not going to play this over that. It's not, and I don't think this is necessarily a replacement for it. Well, I'll just take my marshals out and put Lindens in. I don't think it works like that, you know. Linden. Linden. Linden's truffles. Like Lind- Lindor. I was thinking um, the president. Well, like Lyndon B. Johnson. Lonesome unicorn. Five mana for a three three, or you can play it as a three a two two knight with vigilance for three, and then a three three for five. This card's great. Like it's just. It's just flashback, man. It's just limited fodder. It's just great. I, I mean, I just love that you have these options to like your one card is two things. Like that just feels good. Mysterious Pathlighter, three mana for a two-two flyer. Each creature you control that has an adventure card, adventure, enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter. Hmm. I think you're gonna build around this in limited. I don't think this is gonna construct Mm-mm. a card, obviously. But Mm-mm. it's just still a two-two flyer for three. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Outflank, not to be confused with outfrank. Hmm. One mana. It deals damage to target attacking or blocking creature equal to the number of creatures you control. I hate cards like this. They're just so limited and like... Attacking or blocking? You're like, hey, if I have six creatures, I can kill your 6-6. Six, six. But I have six creatures, so I don't really need to worry about it. Makes sense. Monkey Knife Fight. Thank you so much for the reset, buddy. Welcome back. Really appreciate you. Prized... <coughs> oh my god. Can you just stop? I can quit. Prized Griffin. Five mana. No? Yes. For a 3-4 flyer. Rally for the Throne. Three mana. Create two one one human creature tokens. This is nice because it's just like, um, it's not raise the alarm, but it's like the vampire one, for three mana, like queens something. Queens commission. Queens commission, <gasps> which is two one ones for for three, but it's a sorcery. So this one's an instant, what? so it's an upgrade. If at least three white mana was spent, so if you spent all white mana for this, another going in the mono white devotion deck, uh, you gain a life for each creature you control. So you're getting at least two, maybe sometimes upwards of like <clears throat> seven eight, depending on how many tokens you have. It's pretty good. I mean, yeah. uh, there if there's a, a deck token deck or a mono white devotion deck, I can definitely see this being in there. Mm-hmm. This card is bonkers. Um, did we miss anything? I keep forgetting to write no. cards down. I, but... I, I'll let you know. Okay. Like, well, I don't want you to forget either. This card is this card is bonkers. Bonkers. Realm cloaked giant. It is a seven seven vigilance for seven. That's not very impressive, you might say. That's just a that's just a regular boring limited creature. Uh, the thing is, it also has cast off, which is a five mana sorcery that destroys all non giant creatures. And the likelihood is that that's going to be all of the creatures. This is probably going to kill a ton and ton of creatures. Yep. This is probably just a Wrath of God for five that sits in your graveyard and you can then cast, or well, in your exile zone, so it can't even be exiled. 
and then you can just cast it for five seven mana as a seven seven vigilance. Like this card is amazing for control decks. Yeah, this card's this card's really good. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a staple. It's awkward because this is a card. This is like a fumigate. Just also had a seven seven attached to it. Yeah, that you can cast at a later point. Like there's yeah. this card is ridiculous, and I'm really glad it's <clears throat> mythic. I guess cards like four four of these in your control deck makes you not have to put other cards other, that another you normally would because right. it's tacked onto it. You're like wow. I could run three Supreme Verdict instead of four, and I can put one more win condition in. And now you're just like, four Realm Cloak Giants straight in there. Yep. Because even if you don't, even if you're playing against a control deck, you just still you just, just have four it. seven sevens. Yep. Yeah, this card is bonkers. Righteousness. One mana for a target blocking creature gets plus seven, plus seven. This is a classic card. But it's not classic enough to like... That's not good. It's fine, but like, no one's playing this. It's not good. Shepherd of the Flock. Two mana for a 3-1. That's fine. Return a permanent you control to its owner's hand as an instant for one <sighs> mana. I wish this was Blink. Yeah, it'd be a much different card. I think this card's fine. It's versatile enough. Like, whatever. That's not played. Not return to your hand. If it was Blink, yes. Shining Armor. Two mana for an, an equipment. When Shining Armor enters the battlefield, attach it to a knight you control. That's fine. You're, you're saving me some, some mana. A trip equipped creature gets plus, two, plus O, plus 2, and has Vigilance. I don't think it's going to see play. I also don't think this is going to see play because specifically for like the Knights deck in Standard, you're going to want like legendary equipment so that you can find it with your acclaimed contender. Your acclaimed chicken tender. Silver Flame Ritual. Four mana. For a sorcery, put a 1-1 counter on each creature you control. And that's not bad. But we already have that in Standard. What for is it? three mana. Unbreakable Formation. Oh, sure, sure, sure. If at least three white mana was spent to cast this spell, creatures you control gain vigilance and love. Yeah, this is not impressive anymore. Nope. It's also a it's also a sorcery and it's a common, so. Yep. Silver Flame Squire. We have On Alert, which is an instant. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Untap it. That's fine. And then it's a two one for two. Okay. <laughs> That's cute. So before you read this one, um, Thwok in chat said something we didn't think about. Return to hand gives you a second adventure. If you've cast the creature. Yeah, that's good. Didn't think about that. Again, great for limited, but like... It depends on how good the adventure creatures are, right? Yeah, you can return your giant again and then wipe the board again. Mm. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Sir Alan, the lion's... It's really weird that you could bounce a creature and then instead of just bounce, just having a creature in your hand, you have a board wipe in your hand. That's yeah. a little... That's a little... That's crazy. Yeah. Sir Alan, the lion's claw. <laughs> Sir Jamie Lannister, the lion's claw. Five mana for a 4-4. Four, four. Rest in peace. Human knight... First strike. Whenever Sir Alan the Lion's Claw attacks other creatures you control, get plus one plus. That's not. That's fine. I always I keep reading it. and I'm like, all right, let's see what else. And then I get to the end. And I'm like, oh, never mind. I I can't think of a five mana four four that impresses me. Thalia's lieutenant was good. Yeah. Fucking hater. The dragon, the one we just got done. Glorybringer. That one's pretty decent. I like how the background of this card kind of blends into the background of what we of have. what we have right now. That's <laughs> nice. Like the clouds look the same. Oh, they're both Howard Lion art. That's why. Like both is like the background we have here and behind us, and the trapped in the tower are both Howard Lion art. So that makes total sense. Um, Enchant. What is that thing? It's a full immersion experience. It's just for my. It's just for my team. My team. I'm on team no, no, Fate no. of Karma. But what I'm saying, is like, what it? is it? Is it a vest? Yeah, it's like a vest, but like and it, it vibrates? vibrates. Yeah, it's like a, like it's like a okay, like a surround sound experience basically. Okay, cool. Like you know the like the the, the movie theaters where you can sit the yeah yep. that it's like that right okay. Uh, enchanted creature without flying. Enchanted creature can attack or block and activate. This is actually fine for two mana. Better pacifism. Yeah, ex I mean, except for flying. Well, flying like, I can't put flying. on your Lyra, but Lyra's gone. Yeah, now you get an Archon. True Love's Kiss. This is what Rob and I... Uh, what? What? Huh? <laughs> four, <laughs> four mana for an instant exile, an artifact, or an enchantment, and draw a card. Ugh, four mana, though. But it's the same as, like... Isn't there another one of these? What's the Slice and Twain? Slice and Twain. It's you just mean slice the card that no one plays? Right? And Slice and Twain only hits our uh, enchantments, I think. But didn't Slice... No, Slice and Twain is both. But wasn't it... Um, Maybe I'm thinking of... There's art where it's like a... Yeah, Slice and Twain. Four mana, destroy an artifact or enchantment, draw a card. Mm. Same exact card. This is Exile. But Slice and Twain might have seen standard play. I don't remember. But mm. this is also common. Not Slice and Twain is uncommon. Yeah, that's weird. It's Exile and it's common. And otherwise it's the same card. Venerable Knight. When it enters, when it dies, put one encounter on a knight you control. If there's a knight deck, this I mean, card is great. Savannah Lions it's at its floor. Yeah, it's literally a 2-1 <laughs> for 1. Not bad. With upside. You, that, that cube card, that card that's in cubes, all those one mana two ones. Yeah, you just put this in instead. Not bad. I mean, it depends on how many knights you have, obviously. Mm. 
worthy knight this card is a bar oh actually let's put the other let's put venerable venerable knight. Knight. see you forgot yeah i told you no no no. i was just i was giving you time i wanted to i always try to give you 30 seconds into each card wow before that's a I lot remember. Shut, you want me to go down to 28 no i'm good okay we got it i got you bro i knew you had it you had worthy time. knight two mana for a two two so basically hero of pre saint one whenever you cast the knight spell create a one one white human creature token this this card seems great yep this card is like if you guys played in the previous standard format and you remember how good Hero of Pre-Saint 1 is in the, like, the multicolor decks, the Esper decks, the uh, the Bant decks, whatever. what Pretty much a Mardu deck. Any three-color white deck, um, this card is just probably going to be just as good, I think. Yep. Youthful Knight. Two mana for a two-one with first strike. That's super cool. I hope you... Hope That's you a do. reprint. I hope you do well. Yes. Oh, and we're on the blue. We're on the blue. All right. So if you guys are interested, you can check the description... Uh, for the video, and we will have the um, you know the cards that we thought are, are standard playable, along with the cards that are sideboard playable, in the description. So definitely check that out. Animating Fairy, two and a blue for a two-two flyer, uh, or you can bring to life for three mana. Both are three mana. Target non-creature, non-artifact you control becomes a zero-zero artifact creature. Put four counters on it. So that's actually not bad. Not bad rate. It's a four-four than a two-two. I mean, it's pretty good. There was an artifact reprinted, or not reprinted, that was printed recently, and I'm trying to remember if it's standard or not, but the ability was that when it went to the graveyard, it deal. it's a shrapnel blast. Is that, was that from Modern Horizons, or was that standard card? I actually don't know what that is. It was just printed in the past few months. Does anybody know what that card is? I don't know. I'm going to go to the next card, though. Brazen Bar. Rob, it's a wand and M20. I want you to tell me about this card. Uh, I mean, it, oh, what, this one? Yeah, Raisin Borrower. Pretty cool. Raisin, I like this. Raisin, this card's great. Bar Raisin Borrower. This, card, this card's great. This card, cards like this is what keep, uh, first off, it's not a mythic. Woo it is a mythic. It's not. <laughs> Shouldn't be. Um, Are, really? Yeah, I don't think so. Well, then. What about this card is OP? What about this card is OP? Yeah. See, why is this mythic? This, I mean, this card is this is a this is a rare, like it's definitely a rare, but a mythic. This card's amazing. No, this card is. I, first off, I'm not saying the card isn't good. The card is very good, and cards like this go straight into bl uh, blue green flash. Like this card is awesome in yes. blue green flash. It's, so good. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And what's even better about this card is that blue green flash. When you played just blue green, it evolved into soul tie because they wanted removal. Because there were a lot of times where if a card got underneath your counter spells, you couldn't come back from it. This card is a flash threat with three power, which is huge in the first place, and it can answer something that slipped under a counter spell. So this card is very, very good. I don't think it has a mythic feel to it, but I think its power level is mythic. It has a mythic power level. Like, this card's great. Like, being able to have a boomerang or a 3-1 flying threat. Like, another, con it's just another great control card where you're like, I have a, um, like, I want to say boomerang. It's, it's definitely... It's not boomerang though, it's right. Boomerang's any permanent. What's boomerang that? is any is any permanent. It's like goes with the bo bounce into spells. the royal. Sure, it's like an into the royal, but like you're like you also have a three one flash flyer. So, like so, let's think here. Oh, it's opponent controls. I was gonna say, can you petty theft your own brazen borrower? So it's 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 opponent. Though. Yeah, I think this is better than nimble obstructionist. I think nimble obstructionist saw no play in standard. I think this is gonna see a, I think a heavy play. They're they're two different cards, but this card's just better. Or we're talking about three one flyers for, for three, sure, right? With abilities. So I like this over. Well, different application, but I like this over Click. That's funny because you like it more than Click, but Click is like mythic. <laughs> so it's like you know because I mean? like, the ability that Click does, it's not as versatile as this. Like Click is good at breaking down right, something before it happens. This is good at reacting at something. Right, but I don't think necessarily like the versatility is the only barometer for mythic. Right. I love how you use the word barometer. I love it when you say I love it when you say barometer. Barometer. All right. Please ask Rob to leave. Charmed Sleep. Three Put mana. it on the list, did you? Yeah, it's already there. Just checking, dude. Three mana. Enchanted Creature enters the battlefield. Uh, when this enters the battlefield, tap Enchanted Creature. It doesn't untap. And this is the claustrophobia, right? Yep. It's still fine. Yep. Some blue decks will play this, especially if it's too blue because you have uh, Theros coming. Corridor Monitor. Look at this little artifact creature. Two mana for a one four. That's a good rate. When it enters the battlefield, untap target artifact or creature you control. That's not exciting. Though. If there is a... Um... If there is a blue artifact deck, this isn't that bad because it'll come in in the sideboard against... It could come in in the sideboard against mono red decks. It's just a two-mana dude that blocks very well and can do something in the game. 
Whatever, Rob. <laughs> Three mana, didn't say please. Oh, this is going to be so obnoxious. You're going to be playing at the pre-release, and your opponents are going to be like, didn't say please, and then you're just going to be like, okay, I'll just <laughs> thank you, I'll counter it. And then I'll mill myself. The funny thing is, its controller puts the top three cards of the library into the graveyard. Could be a detriment because they could just be hitting adventure cards for you. Oh, this which is almost like drawing cards. This combos with the 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 uh, tutor, the double sided tutor. Ooh. Yeah, if they cast a spell, okay, you cast that on your turn. They have to cast the spell before. No, no, no. I was talking about the milling part. I just meant that it'll counter the spell that you gave them. Oh, just like any counter spell. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Oh, adventure. Don't play from the graveyard. You're right. Never mind. Don't listen to me. Because hmm? when you cast... Yeah, you have to cast the adventure, then exile it, and then it goes... Then you can cast it from exile. That makes sense. <laughs> what happens if you do say please? It's just awkward for everybody. What if I'm like, I'd like to play the spell, please, and they're like, you didn't say... Oh, oh shit. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm still going to counter it, but you ruined my joke. <laughs> Emery Lurcher of the Lock. I mean, Woo! this card's terrible. Like, it's not... It's like No, it's, it's not bad. It's a cancel. I mean, it's not good. It's a cancel with attack down irrelevant ability. Uh, one, two for three, which is expensive for Mirko, but it costs one less for each artifact you control. So you can go Mox Opal, Welding Jar, uh, Dark Steel Citadel, Cranial Plating, Tap One, Play Emery, and then, you, then it's a deal. Uh, enters the battlefield, put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard. Okay. Then. Choose an artifact card in your graveyard, you may cast that card this turn. This card is so nutty. It's actually pretty This strong. is probably the most powerful. I think this is the most powerful card in the entire set. It's, Not in a standard. It's got a lot going on, yeah. You can literally go infinite on turn two with it. Oh, God. And it's in modern. But yeah, people are just going to slide this into the Merfolk decks, I think. Yeah, you literally just have to have... No, not yeah. Oh, They're Merfolk. Not no, that. not yes, Merfolk. Yes, that's the joke. No, I missed that. You're like, yeah. I was, like, so, no, I, was think, I was thinking, but like this with Jeskai Ascendancy, like with Mox Opal and Mistress Bobble, you can repeatedly activate it by casting, casting the Bobble, tapping it, getting the artifact back, play it again, untap it, do it again. It's a complete cycle. It's very good. The card's sweet. I it, hope I hope it does something standard. There's a lot going. I on. will buy four of these immediately because they will probably go up in price. Oh, can you check and see what it is? What's the price on it? I don't have. Who has the time? Faye. Uh, no. Is it Emery? Emery MTG. Please be less than five bucks. Six 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 fifty. Son of a! I don't even play Paper Magic. What am I doing? People know. What People am I doing know what's with my going life? on. All right, so next card, Fey of Wishes. Two mana for a 1-4. Uh, a sorcery granted. That would be the wish granted for four mana. You may choose a non-creature card you own from outside the game, reveal it, put it into your hand. Sweet. This card is great because you can just go get a creature, a non-creature. And then you play uh, Fey of Wishes for two mana. And then you can discard two cards to return to your hand and do it again. And, and you can look at this card and say discard two cards is bad, but that could be an engine for decks. Yeah, so if you have two, if you have two lands in hand, who cares? Well, I'm saying there may be, you may want to discard cards. Like you could discard, you could discard Arclight Phoenix and then go grab a finale, the three, the two mana X finale and instantly get them back. And if you don't, it's a one four flyer for two, which is still just fine. It blocks everything what? forever. And then you, later in the game, you can just bounce it when you have the mana. Or you what? Can, uh, are you done? Yeah. Right on. I put it on the list. I think this card's good. Yeah. Fairy Vandal. 1-2 one, for for 2. Flash flying. Whenever you draw a second card each turn, put a 1-1 one, one counter on this. This has the potential to get big pretty pretty efficiently. I think Cutthroat is just better than this, though. What's Cutthroat? The Brineborn. The 2-1 two, the two, Flash that gets bigger every time you cast a spell on an opponent's sure. turn. Doesn't have evasion. I just think it's easier to grow. When has discarding as a part of an activation ever been a drawback? Yeah, that's true, I guess. Um, I don't know. It's a one-two for two. I think it's, it's really not bad. easy to draw your your extra depends on the deck, right? Turn. Right. I think it's good. I don't. All the four mana draw twos set it off. Opt on your turn sets it off. Radical idea. I mean, it's not bad. You're not bad. Bruna Cape thinks Black Lotus is better than this card, and I'm gonna say I don't agree. That's hmm. controversial. Folio of Fancies. Two mana for an <laughs> artifact. Players have no maximum hand size. Okay. X, X, and tap. Each player draws X cards. So if I spend 10 mana, each player's drawn five cards. Uh, three and a tap. Each opponent puts a number of cards equal to the number of cards in their hand from the top of their library into their grave. This seems terrible. Is it? In standard it is, but not in commander. 
This is a oh awesome, god and commander. This is an it's great, awesome dude. group hug card. Yeah, and it's a win con. Like yeah. this is everything you want. Commander. But like it's funny because I never want to be like. You have so many cards that milling you is going to be more efficient. Like, no, I just want you to have no cards, and I want to be able to mill you like that. This looks like Jace's scrapbook. More like Jace's crap book. Am I right? You are right. Woo! Goodbye, folio fancies. I'm going to leave. Fro I'm out on that. Frogify. That was peak. Okay. Sorry. Gah. Folio Frogify. I'm like reading the last card. Two mana. Enchanted creature. Enchanted creature loses all abilities and is a blue frog creature with base power and toughness of 1-1. One, one. I mean, uh, what was the three mana card in Mono, Mono Blue to deal with Nib Visit? This is just better. It's just two, two mana version. What if they get rid of it? That I mean, that that's what they did with the old one, too. Shit. There's a three mana one. How come Nib Visit doesn't see play anymore? Is there, it's not. Because every, everything went to like mid range versions of decks, like like ramp decks. You know what I mean? Like the. So Nis ramp and Nib Visit. Well, so right now in 2020 Standard, uh, Team of Reclamation is one of the big you know pillars of 2020 Standard. So glad Nexus of Fate is leaving. Yeah. What do you think? Is this playable? This is playable, right? I mean, it's probably going to see some play. In a sideboard of, like, in that exact, like... I'll put it in the sideboard. Frogify. Gadwick the Wizen. Here's the triple blue legendary creature. Dude, sick. 3-3 uh, three, three for 3, if you want. <laughs> when it enters the battlefield, draw X cards. Oh, that's really good. So I can pay seven mana for this. It's 33 to draw four. That's awesome. Whenever oh, and you, there's more. Whenever you cast the blue <laughs> spell, tap target and all name permanent and permanent. Like, this is just, like, so much better than the white version. This card's really good. Like, I don't even understand why, like, how these cards are even remotely similar. They're not. Right, but I feel like the, the, the cycle should be balanced, and this is just head and shoulders better. Plus, it's a wizard. It's a human wizard. So, like, any, any like, legacy wizard deck or, like, commander wizard deck, this is just go straight, just goes straight into yeah, it. Yeah, this card's, this card's awesome. Gadwick the, the Wizened 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 Okay Hypnotic Sprite 2-1 two, for 2 It's fine 2-1 two, flyer For 2 That's fine Counter spells can remain 3 or less for 3 mana So what is that? Is that like Convolute? But Convolute is 4 mana So it's kind of like A half Convolute Half 2-1 two, for 2 I think this card's fine It's I, not Convolute Convolute is Counter target spell Unless, unless they pay 4 Oh, you're right. It's mana cost. This is like, yeah. uh, God, what is there a card that does this? Yeah, there's a two mana one that does four or less from um, when we first uh, battle for Zendikar, I think. Is there? Yeah. It, it, four or less? It's a devoid card. Good. It's a devoid card. Are you thinking of Horribly Awry? Yes. Mm -hmm. well, That's it. If, this, if the back half of this card had Flash... Yeah, that's two mana. I don't know, three mana, like, maybe it's not that good. No, but it's flexibility. No. Like, this is good in, in green-white. Or green-white. Uh, green-blue. Like, the flash deck. But oh, the problem is... But you can't cast the creature at the... Yes, at that, the is, that is the drawback. Still not bad, though. I mean, it's still a counterspell with a creature attached. Like, I, I think it's it's hard to overlook that. Yeah, it is an expensive one, though. I didn't realize it cost three. If it was two, it'd be... If it was two, it'd be, it'd be sweet. Into the story. Seven mana. This, this card seems great. This card costs three less to cast than an opponent has seven or more cards in their graveyard. Like in the late game, you're just like instant speed. Draw five. four for five. Yeah, it's just. I mean, the problem is you compare this card with like Jace's ingenuity, and you're draw, like working wait. so much harder. It's draw four for four. Oh, it's draw four. You're right. Draw four for four. We said for five. It's for four. No, it's for five. It costs three less. Right. So five minus three. Oh, it is for four. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, that's really good. Yeah, it's getting better. Okay. Man, that's good. Those numbers are really hard to parse for a Ca second there. Ca I know. I, I was like, maybe I'm stupid. I, that's okay. We're both stupid. Yeah. Well, I mean, mostly it was you that time, but yeah. <laughs> you're right. My bad. Math is hard, especially when you're talking at the same time. Math is hard. That card is awesome. Yeah. Like, that, that. that's game right. winning. That All really right. is game winning. I, I agree. Oh, no. I keep Sweet. having to... Oh, God. I keep backing up, and then I'm like... Okay. Sorry, guys. Into the story? Yeah, that seems good. Like, you pair that in a blue-black deck with this card. Which card? This card. You pair it with... Where you pair with this card? Which, yeah. Which card? This card. Which one? All of them. That's weird. Mm. Fuck, this card scares me so much. The Magic Mirror. Six blue, blue, blue. It costs one less for each instant and sorcery in your graveyard. As we know from standard currently, this is not hard to do. And cards like Arcbound Phoenix and Crackling Drake literally rely on that and they're tier one so you have no maximum hand size at the beginning of your upkeep put a knowledge counter on this then draw a card for each knowledge counter on the magic mirror so you're drawing one card 
then two cards, then three cards. Oh, it, wow, there's no lag to it. It immediately draws you a card the next turn. I yeah. was thinking like stacks to where uh, it doesn't take it can it doesn't take effect the first turn. So it it checks on your or next turn. It you adds counters, then checks. Next that's, turn you draw two cards. That's yeah. really good. This card just scares me. I feel like it's like you're. It's just insurmountable. This card's really good. Like if you don't have an answer for this after the after, and they draw even if it triggers three times, they're drawing six cards. What set is Thousand Year Storm from? Does that uh, rotate? It's right now. It's Ravnica. Ooh, that's right. Pretty good. That's pretty good. Thousand. Jesus. <laughs> Why would you? I cannot believe you've done this. Yeah, it was uh, Guilds of Ravnica. That's pretty whatever, cool. Whatever set, Ravnica Allegiance, whatever the Lions, whatever the salt that is. Um, yeah, I don't know. This card seems good, right? Oh, imagine this card would proliferate. No. No. I mean, there is a risk of, like, decking yourself, but the fact that you can't even, like, you don't have to discard at the end of your turn, it's like... Yeah, I am feeling the jank juice. That's what Robert's drinking. He's drinking some jank juice. <laughs> uh, Mantle jank. of Tides. One blue for Crypt Creature gets plus one, plus two... Whenever you draw your second card each turn, attach it to a creature you control. Next. And also equip for three. So. Oh, thanks for that. Merfolk Secret Keeper. Psst, 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 psst. Say that, read the card as a secret. Merfolk Secret. For one blue, it's a zero four. Uh, you can venture deeper and put four cards from your library into your graveyard, any player. So you're mailing four, or you can get an O four. I'm, I couldn't be less excited about either of these halves. I got that. Okay. <laughs> Midnight Cloak. Three mana. Uh, for literally like a mono blue ramp, sp like artifact, where you're like tap it out of blue. Three mana, put an hour counter on it. At the beginning of each upkeep, put an hour counter on it. When the 12th hour counter is put on it, shuffle your hand and graveyard in your library, then draw seven cards and exile it. This is actually kind of sweet. It's just a mono. Weird, but it's cool. Like it's, it's just a three mana mana rock, mm. which is fine. Yeah. But it has the payoff of like, Eventually, if you have... It's a mana sink where you can eventually just draw seven cards. You don't gain anything from it. Though. I mean, you could, right? Who said clock, not cloak? I didn't say cloak. Unless you guys are... He's Bob the Sheep. Did I say cloak? I didn't hear cloak. I didn't hear cloak either. Whatever, nerds. I ain't hear no cloak. Uh, Mirror... Oh, this is, card, is this card playable, though? No, I don't think so. Really? Really? You did lol W. Okay, well, take it easy. Lol. Mirror Maid. Three mana. Uh, you may have Mirror Maid into the battlefield as a copy of any artifact or enchantment on the battlefield. I mean, this is just copy artifact, but for artifacts and enchantments, right? So it's just better? Sure. I mean, it seems good. Sounds like you made something up. What? Nothing. Copy artifact. Do you not know what that card does? Is it copy artifacts that are on the battlefield? Copy artifact. It is a two mana art enchantment that says you may have an artifact. It copies, it copies an artifact, and that one becomes an enchantment, as long with its other types. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. This card seems good. I think this is Traxos. I think this card will see constructed play at some point in some place. Mistford Mistford River Turtle. <laughs> That's the old Mistford River Turtle. Four mana for a one five. I think it's huge. Uh, whenever it attacks, another target attacking non-human creature can't be blocked this turn. Cool fact. And it's, it's a huge butt. It's very similar to, like, Pegasus Charger. That's like, you know, another creature gets flying. Except for it's a 1-3. Right, but it also has flying itself, whereas this does not have any form of evasion. So this no. guy can just get, jumped, like, double blocked and killed. He slowly just dirtles into the zone. Get in the zone! Bob the Sheep likes zone. turtles. Don't we all? <laughs> Moonlit Scavengers. Six mana for a 4-5, so it's probably going to be garbage. When it enters the battlefield, if you control an artifact or enchantment return a car or creature, an opponent controls to understand. This card's great and limited. Yeah, this is yeah. Um Skippa. Skippa. Mystical Dispute. Three mana. It costs two less to cast if target if it targets a blue spell. Counter target spell unless controller pace. This card's really good. Yeah, it's very, very good. This is from Andrea Mengucci. Really? Did he make it? Yeah, he did. Wow. And he showed it to the world. That's amazing. And they let him put it in the magic set? For Yeah, because, you know. That's crazy, dude. He's cool, man. Wish I could do that. You uh -oh. could. Opt. What does that do? Everybody knows what Opt does. We don't even have to go over it. I, I'm Is happy it's back. Play? Probably. 
Probably. Overwhelmed Apprentice. One blue for a 1-2. Another squire. Looks oh. squires all day. When, anyway, when it enters battlefield, each opponent puts the top two cards of the library into the graveyard, then you scry two. What do you think about this? I don't know, dude. Is Naban from Dominaria? Yes. Uh, yeah, there's no wizards anymore. So is M Mahu Mehu, or whatever that name is. Narumiha? Nar Narumiha? Mahu Mehu? I just knew it had a, a real a real Hawaiian sounding name. <laughs> um Yeah, I don't know. If there's a wizard deck I could I could see this being being fine. Seems great with a two mana counter. Wait, does does that rotate out? Wizard retort? Yes, it's a dominary as well. Doesn't seem that great with a two mana counter anymore. Seems bad. <laughs> Queen of Ice, three mana for a two three. Uh you can also play it for two. Tap a creature, it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. That seems good. Yeah. Uh, whenever this deals combat damage to a creature, tap that creature, it doesn't untap during this. The thing is, like, I always hate this ability because, like, if it's ever dealing combat damage to a creature, this is probably dead. It's a 2 3. Oh, you're right, Daft Mania. I don't think this is any good, by the way. Daft Mania was no, referring to a card that we haven't seen yet the blue black oh. card. We'll talk about that later. Oh, well, that's, that's, ways off. that's a ways off. Run away together. Two mana. Choose two target creatures controlled by different players. Return those creatures to the... It's just like Peel from Reality. I don't know, is it? I can't tell if I'm being serious. I can't tell. I can't tell. Return a creature you control and target creature you don't control to those owner's hands. It is, but it's got cuter flavor. <laughs> look at, look. I'm trying to figure out the difference. I'm looking at the art here. <laughs> That's pretty sweet, actually. They do. They're having a good time. What do you want from Well, me? the big dude's not. Well, some of us are. Sage of the Falls, five mana. Whenever Sage of the Falls or another Hyun human, not Hyun human creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card if you do discard a card. Two five. It's just two five for five. I'm out. It's it's good and I don't think it's bad in um, limited. Anything that lets you loot or get deeper in your deck in limited is hundred percent. So tiny. This card's sweet. Uh, one blue. Yeah, this card's great. This is just like the. There's just a card like this in. Yep in uh memory or something hydro something no hmm. sensory deprivation maybe something like that it's got sensory in the name maybe there's this one and creature negative three negative. oh that's close one with flash i don't know someone in the chat will know befuddle no befuddle no, no we're that's talking about next zero i i think this card will see play i agree with you and if there's like a mono we're going towards mono mono color decks if there's a mono blue deck this card is the perfect this is, answer to big this dudes. is one mana in, in blue this is permanent one mana removal in blue yep uh and it also adds to your devotion so it's really good uh steel gaze griffin five mana for a two four flyer Ugh. whenever you draw your second card it gets plus two plus oh that's four four wow you gotta work so fucking hard for your air elementals these days holy smokes <laughs> <laughs> oh, gotta draw my second card to make this guy attack. This, this card is insane. I like this card. Stolen, you want to read it? Return, uh, stolen by the Fae. X blue blue, return, that didn't Sorry. help. Sorry. That's bad. Return target, you, you want to read it? Got him. <laughs> return target creature with a converted mana cost of X to its owner's hand. You create X 1-1 one, one blue fairy creature tokens with flying. So good. What do you got? A four drop? I'll bounce your four drop and, make and I'll four make one four ones. one ones. Yeah. And, the and they all fly? Yeah, it's really great. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's really hard to deal with. Yeah, this card seems bonkers. Yep. Sir Eleonora, the discerning. Uh, another uncommon knight. Five mana for an, a star four. Uh, its <laughs> power is equal to the number of cards in your hand. So if you have one card in your hand, it's a one four for five. That's a good deal. Uh, when enters battlefield, you draw a card. Okay. Spells your opponent's ca cast that targets seer costs two more. That's that's a that's a pretty terrible ability because no one's ever going to cast anything against this. They're never going <laughs> to they're never going to care enough. <laughs> so, Tome Raider three mana for a one one that draws a card when it enters. Cloud Seer is just better. Cloud Seer. Yeah, the two one for the same cost that does the same thing. The elemental. Oh yeah, Cloud Kin Seer plus uh, elite elite guard mage. Mm -hmm. Ugh, sorry guys, the four mana one. I'd rather just pay one more and gain three life and have a two three, but. You know, turn into a pumpkin. <laughs> Four mana, return a non land permanent to its owner's hand, draw a card. If you spent at least three blue mana on this, you get to also make some food. Junk. You get to, you get to make some food. Eat the pumpkins. Yeah, four mana is just not what I want to be paying for my, my bounce spells. Five mana to draw three cards. If at least three blue mana was spent to cast a spell, scry three. So this is literally worse than the one we already have in standard. What's well, that? Wait, what's the it one is. We, what's the one we have in standard? The addendum. Is it addendum one? There's one that you can scry three if you do it during your own turn. Are you talking about the Ugin one? 
Ugin's insight? Maybe. This is, no, this is an old no, one. No, uh, there's a card that's five mana. It's an instant. And the instant one... Oh, precognition. Pre yeah, yeah, that's it. Yep. Uh, precognitive perception. Draw three cards. If you cast a spell during your main phase... Oh, this is just much better. Yeah, this card's trash. This is literally so much worse. Yeah. Uh, Vantress Gargoyle. Two mana for a 5-4. Wow, what a deal. It's got to be great. It's pretty sweet. Flying. Oh, shit. It's getting better. <laughs> Can't attack unless the defending player has seven or more cards. In their That's not terrible. Can't block unless you have four or more cards in hand. This is actually not bad at all. I don't all. think it's that bad. It's an artifact. If you play this on turn two, you're going to have four more cards in hand. So it's just a 5-4 blocker. Yep. Each player puts a top card of the library into the graveyard. Yeah, this seems pretty good. Mm-hmm. Turns on the blue black card we're going to talk about later too. I was expecting it to get a lot worse, but then it was fine. No, this card I like this card a lot. Should I put it down? Yeah, hundred percent. Okay, Vantress Gargoyle on the list. Probably the last blue. Oh no, I was wrong. Vantress Paladin, four mana for a two-two flyer. I could probably stop here, but we'll keep going. <laughs> if at least three blue mana span, it gets a one-one counter. So a three-three flyer for four. It's good and limited. Is it? Three-three for four is yes. Two-two, okay. not so much. Okay. Wishful Merfolk. Two mana for a 3-2 with a defender. Oh, loses a defender, becomes a human until the end of the turn. Skippa. Huh? It's probably going to be good Merfolk, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, for sure. Witching Well. One blue. When it enters battlefield, scry two. Okay, so that's what you're getting. This card's sick. For your one blue. Uh, then you can sacrifice to draw two cards. This actually is very good. Yeah, this is a really good card. It's just like a card you put on board and you're like, well, later I'll get two cards out of it. Yeah, this is, this is like really it. good. Yeah, I like it. This, like... Like, for a common, it's nice. It lets you hit your land drops. Like the scry is great on turn. Yeah, one. Like that's when you want it the most. Yeah, and you know, like you just like whenever you need the two cards later in the game. It kind of reminds me of like legacy, like how Ar Arkham's Astrolabe is like destroying legacy. <laughs> is it destroying legacy too? I thought it was just a modern. No, menace. yeah, it really is. Yeah, because four color controls everywhere Jesus. because of the Astrolabe. But it's cool because you can literally lay this down. I can't wait till Wizards bans one mana artifact that cantrips. <laughs> You can, I know, right? God, it's going to be and, so... Astrolabe, Band in Modern, and Legacy. Yeah. You're like, come on, really? But it's cool. It's an artifact. You can keep a one-land hand if you have, like, a low-curve deck and go, okay, I'm going to cast this on turn one and see the next two cards. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is this card's really sweet. I like this a lot. I'll put it down. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm, the first thing I'm going to build with is, is artifacts. That's the first thing I'm going to try and build. That's the first thing he's going to try. Right away. Black cards! B -b 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 black card. Look, we start with the triple black, the triple black legendary creature. Can't handle it. Ayada, first of Lock the Way, Lock the Way. Uh, Elf Noble for a two three. Whenever it or another uh, black creature enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one and you gain one. Second of the black creature draw card. I'm just underwhelmed. Are I mean, uh, who knows what it? Are you I, not underwhelmed? I am a little underwhelmed. I'm gonna eat this chocolate that you got. That's yours. That's why I brought it. God, you're so nice. I, I just had, I didn't eat anything, so I need a little. What, you don't like this? Do you like this or no? The chocolate? The Ayara. It's like two, two three. I mean, it depends on it depends on the deck. You have to see if there's a deck that can support it. It's, it's got a strong ability. Does it? I don't know, man. I'm not putting it down. I don't think it's really strong. I don't think you should put it down. I'm not the saying The only that. one of these, like, three colored mana legendary creatures I liked was the blue one so far. Weis so. Weisner. Billy Wisner. Oh, what is that? Hmm? That's the yeah, blue Billy Wisner, right. Bake into a pie. Four mana, destroy a creature, create a food token. Boop! Great limited card. What if it was destroy a creature or a planeswalker? It would be standard. It would be a staple. Really? You think? It's Vraska's Contempt. No, nah, it's different. What? It exiles. I don't think that's relevant. Most and you don't have to invest two mana to gain your life. I mean, maybe. No, because the Hero's Downfall dude is in here. There's no way. There's no way it would take the place of the dude. The adventure dude. That's Hero's Downfall. It would still be playable. Like there, there's Playable, no way sure. But staple, I don't know. Let's talk about the next one. Barrow Witches. Five mana for a 3-4. Return a knight card from your rear your hand. This is great and limited. That's the end. Bell of the Brawl. I love this <laughs> That's name. That's awesome. 3-2 three, for 3 with Menace. Okay, I'm on board. Whenever it attacks other knights you control, oh, this is great. Card's real strong. This is a great knight lord. It reminds me of, um, there was a two-mana one that did it um, uh, a few standards ago. I think it was uh, my dad. No, it wasn't. Uh, he's right. 
was not your father. It's sad we're losing Knight of Malice and Knight of Every. Opposite Malice. Don't worry, they printed like 500 of them. Oh, I guess that's true. Mm -hmm. Are we done here? Yeah, well, we're this good. Is good, right? Good card. I like the card. Put it down because there will be a Knight deck, sir. Bell of the Brawl. Bold of the Brawl. Black right. Lance Paragon. I'm going to write this guy down as well. The problem is that, like. Oh, I did it again. The, um. The pirate version of this card did not see... I'm doing it again. This is amazing. I'm actually terrible at this. I'm so sorry, guys. Do you want me to do something? Don't use arrows. That's all I have to say. Do you want me to do something? I Yeah, just sit there and look pretty. Black Lance Paragon. Like, so it's a two-mana 3-1 with Flash. Mm. When it enters the battlefield, target Knight gains Death Touch and Lifeling until end of turn. So you can target yourself. And if you block a creature, it's going to kill that creature. And it's basically a Lightning Helix in the sense that you're getting three. But you can target... Any knight. You can get a 1-1, one, 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 a 1-2. One, you can make that dude Death Touch lifelink. Yeah, so you can actually flash in this card, mm -hmm. block with your 1-drop, and then make this a 4-2 lifelink. Oh, no. It'd just be a 4-2. From what? From the 2-1 the knight. Oh, because it dies. Yeah, right, it right. dies. So I like this card because this, maybe not main deck, although a three in an aggro deck, a 3-1 for 2 can be pretty darn good. Um, this could definitely be a sideboard card because as we're going to see the green, there's a lot of on rate or above rate green creatures that are just huge. Um, and out of the sideboard when you're playing red green decks or green X decks, this can just come in and just start eating dudes. What's a green X deck? What's that? Is that a Pokemon? Green? It's a green Phoenix deck. Green X? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. God, Magic players have the weirdest names for, for decks. Um, there was also, don't forget there was Dire Fleet whatever yeah, it was that's the two mana one yeah the pirate one that did the same thing and that saw no play yeah but it, that's that's because pirates saw no play correct this that's, is that nice. was the point i was gonna yeah that was the point i was making i i, I i'm in agreement so with terrible. rain loss how could they come up with such a ge generic set after the wizard the war of the spark masterpiece I dire fleet poisoner was it, it it had death touch itself yes and and it target attacking, death touch. oh it's also target attacking pirate you control gets plus one plus one and gains death mm. touch so like that's much worse and this is this is this is much better. I think this is a better card. I agree. I think it's good. Bog naughty. <laughs> sometimes sometimes you got to get a little bog naughty if you know what I mean. Uh, three three flyer for five sacrifice food. The creature gets neg three neg three. That's good if you have a bunch of food. That's really good. In limited Jesus. Yeah, in limited it's really good. That just messes up combat. Cauldron familiar one man. Oh, uh, see, so someone said, do you think designers are disappointed when cards they play don't they make don't see play? No, because they they're not designing them for standard. Like just because the card doesn't see standard play. Uh, doesn't mean other people aren't playing it or that it's not played in Commander or that it, you know people aren't happy to open it at their kitchen table, things like that. Um, <clears throat> standard and modern are not the, like the the, bar the the barometers by which a set is successful. Barometers. Cauldron Familiar, or a design rather, not a set. Uh, one mana for a 1-1. One, one. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent loses one and you gain one. And then sack a food, return Cauldron Familiar from your graveyard to the battlefield. Mm. It's interesting. It's not. Okay. Cauldron of Eternity. It's interesting. 12 mana. This costs two less to cast for each creature card in your graveyard. If I have three creatures, this costs six. What? <laughs> <laughs> Why did you say it like that? When a creature you control dies, put it on the bottom of its owner's library. Okay. Okay. Three and a tap, pay two life, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, activate this only any time you can cast a sorcery. I don't think this is that good. It just has, it's too restrictive. It's a worse Whip of Erebos. Oh, a Whip of Erebos exiles at the end of the turn. This creature stays around. Sure, but the middle part it's just ruins different. this card. Right, because it means like whatever you have in there now is what you get. Yeah. You're not going to be able to add any more. Is it from anywhere? No, it's when it dies. So you can still discard them. It's pretty meh. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Cauldron's Gift, five mana. Adamant, if at least three black mana was spent to cast this spell, put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard. And then you choose a creature card. This is interesting because it says choose a creature card. So if they're like, I'm going to exile this one, you can be like, all right, I'll choose a different one. So this is just another reanimation spell? Correct. It's your typical five mana reanimate spell, uh, except it gets a plus one, plus one counter. Instead of haste, like the one in standard already. Right. And also it gets, uh, you can you can mill yourself to help find something. Mill yourself? Which is nice. I mean, you can hit a Dracu, Seth, whatever. Clackbridge Troll, five mana for an eight eight. So basically, uh, they added one mana and they added plus two plus two a desecration demon. Trample and haste. 
When it enters the battlefield, an opponent gets three O one one white goat tokens. Meh. At the beginning of combat on your turn, any opponent may sacrifice a creature. If a player does, tap it, you gain three life, and you draw a card. <laughs> it's very nice. <laughs> this card's so good. It's very good. The art's sweet, too. Clack Bridge Troll. Do you think he wants to eat the goats, or is he like, these are my pet goats? There are many like them, but these are mine. I think he's eating them, which is why I get the food. That's why you gain three life, because mm. they're starting in the food. He's leveling up. It's literally implied. In the in the it's in the context. I can't read. I read it though. I can't hear. <laughs> <laughs> this card's so good though. Seriously, it's really good. That's a good save. Yeah, this card's great. Uh, the problem is that it's not desecration demon because they give. Uh, it it gives your opponents ways to tap it down. Where desecration demon, you can just play it, and it's like, well, if you have guys. Yeah, but you draw a card. Like. Oh, it's true. You're this right. This card's and you so three. good. Like. Both of these are fine. Like, if you just drew an extra card and gained three life every turn, like, that's still good. Yeah. But the problem is it's five mana, right? Don't care. Okay. I think it's good. Don't get me wrong. I think it's great. Epic Downfall. Two mana, exile a creature with a mana cost three or greater. I think it's good. It is. Okay. Good sideboard card. It's sideboard playable. I'll type on a pile. Have a whole high. Eye Collector. One mana for a 1-1 one, one Flyer. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, each player puts the top card of their library into the graveyard. Interesting card. That's a good enabler. It's not. I disagree, actually. You may. I what, really do. What is it enabling? Graveyard strategies. You're just milling for one. Uh, not the power is uh, irrelevant. Uh, 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 no, the power is not. Like, it's not, I don't care about it's one one. So, I'm like, you're only milling one card. So, think of it this way. Like, what was the name of the one drop that when you when it enters the battlefield, you mill the top three cards of your library? And then when it dies, Stitcher Supplier. That's three cards. Correct. I understand that. I'm just saying, I think that leaves. I think that's M19. Well, it's M20, but... No, it's M19. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, you're right. So, I think it, I think it leaves, but... Um, I'm just saying, that's, that's not the worst, it's right? It's like three turns to have that same effect. And, like, you can, sure. you can just sacrifice the Spire, so you're getting six cards. I'm just going to pass. I, I can see your point, though. I wasn't saying put it on the list. I don't think it... I think it has to fit into something. I don't think it, it deserves to be there. Someone was just calling Rob's phone, and the name on the phone was LOLL Jose. And I was like, wow. It stands for Atlanta Lakes Little League. Oh, I thought he, Jose was just really funny. You're like, lol, Jose. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Festive Funeral, five mana. Target creature gets negative X, negative X, telling her X is the number of cards in your graveyard. That's, I mean, it's five mana. That sucks, dude. It's good for limited. It sucks, dude. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, I like this. Only because it says target player. Why don't you read it then if you like it so much? Foreboding Fruit. Two and one black. Target player draws two cards and loses two life. Adamant. Uh, if you paid three black mana, then you get a food token. Don't care about that. You don't care about food? No. I just like that it says target Buddy, player. I've known you for fucking like years and you, thought, you <clears> always I think care about, about food. food. It's yeah. unbelievable. We're going to go get food after I mean, this. this is just read this is just read the bones, right? No, it's not. Read the bones is much better than this. Oh, cuz the scry, right? But I mean like it's your it's your not that I'm It's on. your standard 3 mana draw 2 Correct. that we always have. And yeah. you take yeah, it's draw 2 take 2 and with mm -hmm. a with a kick with like a kick with mm -hmm. like a, a bonus. Forever Fuck. young. You know what's coming? I knew like, it. Here we go. Two mana, put any number of target creature cards from your graveyard on top of your library and then draw a card. So for two mana, you're at least like getting one creature back. You're just drawing the creature, right? Because if I have like one creature that I want, I can put it, I just, it basically puts it right in your hand. Are you, are you talking to me or are you talking to chat? I'm always talking to you. Okay. I feel like you're so far back. It's really funny. I'm right here, man. Yeah, you could be wherever you want. It's totally fine, but it's just you felt be funny. be wherever you like. So I was like, I really have to like look back to see you. No, you're good. You're good. You're totally good. This wasn't a. This wasn't a. This wasn't a criticism. This is an observation. I think it's. 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 I think it's worth noting those. Just making that distinction. Okay. Okay. This is pretty all right. I mean, I'll think it's agree. It's no. It's like goblin foot foot bottom feast. Is that what it's called? Goblin footballer feast. Can we look up foot bottom feast? Let's see what that does. Foot bottom feast. Put I, any number of creature cards from your graveyard on top of your library. Draw a card. It's that, literally that's three better. instead, but it's it's an instant. That's so. better to me. All right. Why would he talk to chat? <laughs> Foulmire Knight. Uh, this is a 1-1 one, one Death Touch for 1, which is great. Yep. Um, and, and I'm saying this in the sense of, like, like Typhoid Rats and stuff. Those cards do see play. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is also a Knight. Extremely relevant if you're playing a Knight deck. Draws cards. Uh, and then for 3 mana, if you draw it in the later game, you can cycle it. Literally draw a card, lose a life. And get a 1-1 one, one Death Touch. And then still get the 1-1 one, one out of it. This card's... And it's a zombie, too. Like, it's two relevant creature types... With Death Touch, great rate. This card is fantastic. Um, 
I, I don't remember a limited format where if I had like one of the one ones for one with that touch, I wouldn't play it. <laughs> but bottom <laughs> feast is what I'm into. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, Jesus. That's funny. Oh, boy. Giants skewer two mana. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus one. Uh, whenever a quick creature does common, as soon as it says common, I'm reading this. I'm like, it's not gonna. Be, it's, the payoff is not gonna be worth the reading. You ever cooked a whole pig before? No, because I like pigs as as friends, not food. I have. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> What's worse is I buried it to cook it. <laughs> Create a food. To, whenever a quick creature does common, damage to a creature. Yeah, this is just. With that art, it should be. It should fun. be. It should be a tiny piggy. Or it should create like seven foods. Get out of here. <laughs> Lash of Thorns. One black. Target creature gets plus two, plus one, and gets death touch until it's a combat trick, but I mean, I think it's playable. It's not, in, except in limited. Lockthwain Paladin. Three, two for four with Menace. If at least three black was spent, it gets a counter, right? Yeah, okay. So it's a four. Yeah, it's fine. Whatever. Lost Legion. Three mana. One black, black for a two, three. When it enters the battlefield, scry two. Awesome art. Terrible card. It's great and limited. True. I mean, I'll play a two, three for three that scries two. Mm hmm. Malevolent Noble, two mana for a two-two. Sacrifice an artifact or another creature. Put one. Nope. I mean, I don't think the two mana is really where I want to be. Like, if this was literally sack an artifact or another creature, put a one-one counter on it. I think it's good. It works it's with real, the wand. Really good. It works with the wand. What wand? The retributive wand, the thing that does five damage to a, to a target when you, when it goes to the graveyard. Isn't that cycling out? No, I don't think so. Check it. I'm interested now. No, what? I think we just got that card. Retributive wand. Oh, it is. Return it. It deals one damage when it's put in a graveyard from the battlefield. It deals five damage to any target. God, you're right. What a bonkers. Co what a combo. M20. Not putting it down, though. <laughs> Memory Theft. Three mana. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose an online card from it. That player discards that card. You put a card from that has an adventure card. You may put a card that has an adventure that player owns from exile into that player's graveyard. Oh, that's interesting. So if they've cast an adventure, you just put it in the graveyard instead. Yeah, you take it away. I don't think it's any good, though. If this was two mana, it would totally be playable. It's just coercion, right? Like, it's literally coercion with the adventure clause, which is good. It makes it better than coercion. Mm. Oh, God. This card is so good. Put it on the list twice. I want to read it. Oh, go ahead, read it. And again. Let's read it. No, you got this one. Oh, you just said I want to read it. And then I wanted to read it? it on the list twice. Cool, dude. Murderous Rider, Murderous Rider. One black, black. To a, so it's Heroes Downfall mana cost. Destroy a creature or Planeswalker, you lose two life. That's good. It's an instant. Is it an instant? The only problem is that you're losing two life. But the offset of that is that you get a 2-3 with lifelink. So you're just going to gain that life back. The nice, the funny thing about this is when it dies, you put it on the bottom of its owner's library. So you can't like <laughs> put it back into your hand and then have another Hero's Downfall. That's awesome. This card is great. Yeah, this card's sweet. If Hero's Downfall said you may cast this, you may pay two life. If you do, you can cast this at any time later for a 2-3 lifelinker. Would you do it? Are you asking me if I would play this card? Yeah. Yes, I would. Okay, cool. Every time, all the time. Uh, Blunder Bra. What the list that we're making is? Uh, we're making a list of all the cards we think are standard playable or playable in sets or constructed playable. Or constructed, I should say. Yeah, and then we're, we he puts it on the videos. I put it in the description so you guys can uh, you guys can easily look it over and be like, oh, these are the cards that these these losers thought were good. Oath Sworn Knight. One black black for a zero zero. That's terrible. I could never play a zero zero. It dies immediately. <laughs> It enters the battle with a 4 1 1 counter. Why didn't they say so? It attacks each combat. So it's a 4 4 for 3. This card's if great. Damage would be dealt to it while it has a 1 1 counter on it. Prevent the damage and remove 1 1 counter from it. This card's great. Is it, it though? Yes! It's a 4 mana 3 or 3 yeah, mana 4 4. It's pretty good. And it's a human and it's a knight. Yeah. Yeah, this is good. And it doesn't die when it's dealt damage. Okay, you need to relax. And it doesn't die when it's dealt damage. Oh, sworn knight. Yeah, this card's really good. Uh, Bearfish Nico. So the way adventures work is you can choose to cast the adventure. Uh, and if you do, then you exile that card. And then at a later time, you can cast the creature half of it. Uh, or if it's in your hand, for example, if I just want to cast the creature, you can cast a creature and then that's it. So you basically can cast the adventure before the creature. Did you... Explain it to him? Yes, I did. That's cool, man. Order of Midnight. Two mana for a 2-2 two -two flyer that cannot block... But if you want to play after fate, it returns a creature from your graveyard to your hand for two mana. This card's good. I don't know if it's constructed good, but it's very good and limited. It's a four mana two two flyer, Eternal Witness. It's a grave digger, right? It's a four mana grave digger, right? Like you return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand, and you get a two two flyer. Oh, it's creature card. 
I thought it was any card. Oh my god, this card would be. That's why I just said Eternal bonkers, Witness, dude. Yeah, no, I don't think this is that good. No, it's not. It's just Gravedigger. It's a flying Gravedigger. Yeah. Piper of the Swarm, <laughs> two mana for a one three. Rats have menace. This is the fucking rat lord that they've been waiting for. <laughs> two mana and a tap create a one one black rat creature token. Four mana and a tap sack three rats gain control of a creature. I don't know if it's playable. It's constru- I mean, they're gonna play in Commander. Like the the, the rats dudes in Commander are gonna be like, finally, it's my my time. <laughs> we did it. Come. <laughs> They don't get plus one, plus one. They get Menace. So they're all still, still one ones. Okay. There's a red card that makes rats. What do you think about Rankle Master of Prankles? Four <laughs> mana for a 3-3. Three, three. It's got Flying and Haste, so you're going to hit with it the first time. Whenever it deals whenever it deals combat damage to a player, choose any number of the following. Each player discards a card. Each player loses a life and draws a card. Each player sacrifices a creature. This card is good. In the right deck, it's great. interesting well it's definitely not smallpox because you're not losing a land which is like the most relevant part of smallpox like smallpox being able to keep you off mana is pretty insane i don't know man it's good with narset the parody scares me <laughs> like it's good with narset yeah because they can't draw a card oh wait yeah they can it's on your turn <laughs> i'm an idiot i gotta read the card first stupid. sorry my bad i think it's i think it's got a lot going on i would put it on there i think it's playable the fact that each player can discard a card is good. Each player sacks a dude is good. Like, that's... This is good. This card's good. Again, it's great in the right deck. It's good as it is. You need to relax. Take it easy. I'm, gonna, I'm sorry. This is a 4-5 for 7. This is junk. You can make your opponent discard two cards for four mana. So it's a little bit higher rate than, like, a Mind Rot, but you're getting a creature out of it as well. This card sucks. Whenever Reaper of Night attacks, if Tim Player has two or fewer cards in hand, it gains flying until end of turn. It's really expensive. I mean, I'd probably play this in limited. <sighs> Maybe. I don't even know if I would. Seven mana is This a card lot. sucks. Okay, man. Take it easy. Go back to Prankle Sprinkle. Yes, you can choose all three. You choose any number. So that's again, awesome. You can make them a discard a card. You can have them lose life and draw a card. And you can sacrifice a creature. The key being that you would discard before you draw. Uh, can you order it how it happens? No. no. It's, it's going to be an order. Mm-mm. This was just a limited card. This is just... No, no. The four, Oh, the, the Reaper. Yeah, Reaper. Yeah, Voxy. Voxy created this one yesterday. Um... I wish it had flying. Yeah. I wish what it said was, let's see, if they have two or fewer cards in hand, it gains flying. I wish it was a 4-5 flyer that the ability was, when it dealt damage, if they have two or less, you make them discard a card. That would be good. Yeah. It's a specter, right? That would be uncommon, though. It's a... It's a <laughs> all right. Well, you don't think so? I agree with you, but, like... Reeve Soul. This is a reprint. Two mana, destroy a creature with power three or less. It's good. I wish it wasn't a sorcery. I don't think it's good good. I think it's okay. It's okay. It's okay, man. Revenge of Ravens. Four mana, whenever a creature attacks, you or a planeswalker. You remember that time my drink was here and then you grabbed my drink and drank out of it? I did like four times that day. Remember that? Yeah. Uh, you could... Uh, that controller... No, this is for four mana. Get the, get, just, just leave. <laughs> Terrible, right? I don't even know what it does. Whenever a creature attacks, you or a planeswalker control, that creature's control loses a life and you gain a life. That sucks. It's so bad. Smitten Swordmaster. I like that this has the, the word smitten in the title. Two mana for a 2-1 lifelinker. I'm on board. Sorcery adventure for one mana. You gain X life for each opponent loses X for X the number of knights you control. That's so strong this for one mana. This card is busted in the night deck. Not busted, but it's very good, right? The, yeah, this is like a one or a two of. Like, you just you just smack somebody for five damage, and then I, you're like, I'll swing out. This seems like a four of. Four? At worst, it's a 2-1 lifelink for two. With, it's a knight, right? Like, Give me so three. You either play it as, an, as a card that adds to the board. Like, if you have... Yeah, this is a four of, for sure. Like, because late game, you want to draw as many of these as you can. If I have four knights on board, and I'm just like, Smitten Swordmaster, you take four, I'll play it from the graveyard, play my second one, you take five, play it from the graveyard. Like, exile, play it from Exile, yeah. you guys know what I mean. Yeah. Like, uh, Okay, I'm, I'm on board. The, the amount of good. damage this, this first half can deal in the knight deck. I'm on board. Especially with, like, tokens and you're going wide. This card seems scary, dude. I'm on board. And it's each opponent loses X life. Oh, you cast it. Oh, it makes Two-headed a Two-headed giant. Though. Oh, yeah. Except for you're going to be gone. I'll be, I'll be two-headed gianting. Where? Without you. Damn it. At the game grid in Logan. Logan, Utah at the game grid. It's not a real place. Is it a real place? It's a real place. Okay. That's where I'm going to be. That's where I'm going to be. Whatever, dude. In Utah. In Logan, Utah. Utah. Spectre's Shriek. One black. Target opponent reveals their hand. You may choose a non-land card from it. If you do, that player exiles that card. If a non-black card is exiled, they'll say exile a card from your hand. This is a cool card. That's interesting. 
Is it? Can you exile an adventure card and cast it? Yeah, why can't you? Then that's not bad. This is just like a better thought seize then. <laughs> right? In that situation, yeah. If you yeah. Have, but I mean, if you don't have an adventure card, it's just a, it's a worse thought seize because you're just getting rid of Two a card. Two for one. Wait, that doesn't work, they're saying. Yeah, actually, just so you guys know, I will be at... Wait, that doesn't work? Why doesn't that work? Because Adventure, I guess the wording says only if you cast it. Oh, for, that's interesting. Then this card is... Bleh. Yeah, this card's just bad. Unless right? you could take advantage of it somehow. there has Maybe there's some way you can take advantage, like Miss Hollow Griffin. Oh. Yeah, I mean, like, right. If your deck has a, a, key, a key component... A Force of Will is a two-for-one. You're right. This card's great. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. We've changed our mind. <laughs> Yeah, Henracious, I am going to... Uh, my friend Jake P., who owns the Game Grid Logan, invited me to come out and pre-release at the Game Grid in Utah. He's a friend of mine. And uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'll be there pre-release weekend, so if you guys are in Logan, Utah, or in Salt Lake City, because that's where I'm flying into, then you guys can come hang out and pre-release with us. It'll be sweet. Eternal Scourge, good one. Sir Conrad the Grim, it's an uncommon. Didn't we already read this card? For, why do I feel like... Oh, there's another Sir. There was another there's, Sir there's card. Like, there's, there's a Sir in every color. Whatever, dude. 5-4 five, for 5. Whenever another creature dies or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield or a creature card leaves your graveyard, Sir Conrad the Grim deals 1 damage to each opponent. That's a lot of, like... It's still too slow. It's 5 mana, yeah. Each, each player puts the top card of their graveyard into the library. Yeah, this is very slow. It's a limit. Like, I don't know. It's too slow. It's too <sighs> slow. Okay, bye. Hilior says way too Tempting slow. Tempting Witch. 3 mana for a 1-3. When it enters the battlefield, create a food token. Okay. Sacrifice food, target player loses three life. So it's just a reverse food token. You're just giving them your poison apple. That's good. The flavor in this set is fantastic. I mean, I feel like even if you don't like the cards, like the flavor is so good. Wicked Guardian. Four mana for a 4-2. When it enters the battlefield, you may have it deal two damage to another creature you control if you do draw a card. 4-2 for four, four that draws a card. Not bad. Limited. That sometimes could Limited. draw a card. Limited. Okay. Wait. Go back. You may have it deal two damage to another creature you control if you do draw a card. Well, if you don't sure. have another, like, if you don't sure. have another three toughness or greater creature, like, then it's just. Wish, wish claw Talisman. Two mana. It enters the battlefield with three wish counters on it. This is so interesting. I love this card. One and a tap. Remove a wish counter from it. Search your library for any card. Put it in your hand. Then shuffle your library. An opponent gains control of it. Activate this ability only during your turn. This card's really good with wish, um, manifold key. Yeah, because with the trigger on the stack, you can untap it. Yep. Uh, it's also good with the with the uh, bounce and non-land permanent. You can bounce this back to your hand and then mm -hmm. cast your brazen Activate it. borrower. Yep. Mm -hmm. This card's pretty good, man. Yeah, this card. It's card. This card has a lot of app. Like th just being able to search your deck for anything. Incredible with Karn. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, that's right. Karn shuts it off for the other player. Oh, that's, that's really good. That's interesting. It's literally just demonic tutor for one extra mana. Yeah, this card's really good. And if it entered the battlefield tapped, I'd be like, no, that's one thing, but it doesn't. So, yeah, this card's good. Wishes ven Witches Vengeance. Three mana. Ooh. Creatures of the chosen type of your choice get negative three negative. This card's good. Take that, knights. Um, that's a sideboard card for sure. Yeah, this card's sick. I, I didn't even see this card before. It's kind of like a Plague Engineer. But, like, uh, you know, it's a sorcery and it's a little bit better, stronger, but um, still very, very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this card's awesome. Mm -hmm. Now we hit the Landos. Landos. Come on, I can I can spell land. Castle Ardenvale. What do you think of this land cycle, this rare land cycle? They're okay. It enters battlefield tap unless you control a plane. So if you have Hollow Fountain, you can play this untapped. And they just it's just a, it's basically just the planes that gives you they seem great in modern, right? Some of them. Because you just go first turn like Hollowed Fountain or like get a get a planes. And then you just play this. It comes in play untapped, then it gives you this late game value. I mean, sure. It's okay. Why do you sound like a hater right now? Because I, I don't think it's that great. I think this card is definitely going to see play. No, it's not. Why would you... What what deck with planes wouldn't play this? In modern? Even or in like, standard? They're not legendary. They're not even legendary. Yeah, I, like, I, I know mean, they're not. No, I don't think this is any good. What about standard? Standard, I could see it because it's a slower format. Then it's going on the list. Put it on the list! Castle Embreath. Castle Embreath enters the no, battlefield. This card tapped. is this card's playable. Unless you control a mountain, creatures you control get plus one, plus O oh until end of turn. This card is playable. This card is standard playable. This card could be played in like modern goblin decks. This card could be played in modern aggro decks. With goblins. Guys, just so you know, I wasn't speaking to, to like 
how powerful it is in modern. I was talking about how easy it is to circumvent the comes into play tactic right. ability in modern because you have fetch lands, because you have ways Shock to... lands. It right. doesn't say basic. Uh, Castle Garenbrig enters the battlefield tapped unless you control... These all sound Scottish, don't Sam, they? Sam, ba Sam Black loves this card. Uh, so four mana tap adds six green. Spend this only to cast creature spells or activate abilities. So it ramps you one mana. Which is still... But it's still... The people, the thing people I feel like are underestimating is that it's the fact that, like, it's free. No, it, yeah, it's a free way to play right. ahead of curve. It's very good. It doesn't take a rampant growth cast the turn prior. It just ETBs. You ramped by playing your go. land. And it's not even like you have to sacrifice it to add, like... <laughs> oh, that's a good, that's a good clip. Castle Lockthwain. Uh, this card's awesome. Tapped, unless you control a swamp. Draw a card, then lose life. You'll number of cards. You this card scares me the most. I like this card. I'll lock it. Castle Lockthwain. <laughs> yeah, draw cards. I mean, so like, if, but if you have like two cards in your hand and you draw a card, you lose three. Like, it's a lot. It doesn't matter. It's the ability to draw a card on a land. I agree good. with you. Like, there's no cost to playing it is the thing. Like This is stupid to me. How do you scry two for four, but drawing cards for three? Like, that just seems backwards. I understand you lose life, but that, that just seems backwards to me. Don't understand that. Still very playable. Yeah, I think blue already has the means to draw cards, whereas black does not as much. But I, I'm talking about man the card, the I'm, cost. I'm talking about mana. Mana card cost. Dwarven Mine. It enters the battlefield tapped unless you control three or more mountains. So these are a little more restrictive. Uh, when it enters the battlefield untapped, create a 1-1 one, one dwarf creature token. I don't like it. It is a mountain. Yep. That's interesting. Wow, you can play this like Valica too. That's really weird. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you play like one of these and like... I don't know. Again, I want to say like... If you have like steam vents, blood crypt steam vents, and then you blow up like a blood stain mire, and you just get a, you just search this out, and like you can just put a one one for everything free. you just described sounded very painful. <laughs> I don't know, man. Fable yeah. Passage. What do you think of this guy? This card is awesome. Search library for basic land card. Put it on the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle your library. Then if you control four more lands, untap it. Like it's literally evolving wilds that after turn three comes into play untapped. We will revisit those for everyone saying I'm wrong. I maybe, but I don't. I don't think the dwarven mine. I'm not saying the other ones in this. We're getting to those, but the dwarven mine one was no good to me. This card's awesome for standard. This card's great. Love it. He loves it. I've been playing a lot of obviously, like you know, on arena, a lot of the 2020 standard. And one of the things I've noticed is you're not playing one drops. So playing all shock lands, a lot of the decks that I'm playing, I just go turn one, pass, tap right. land, go. Yeah, hundred percent. So this on one, great. This on four, better. Like it's really good. This card's awesome. Love this card. It's just interesting because, like, this seems like it could just be, like, I mean, I know the power level is higher, but this seems like it could be the common version of Evolving Wilds, and that would still be just fine. Yeah. It's only rare because we're comparing it to Evolving Wilds, mm -hmm. but, like, as a card, a card like this existing at common does not seem broken. It doesn't. It just seems totally fine. Because by turn four, you should have most of your lands well, anyway. I mean, at the, end of the, at the end of the day, it just fetches land color, so it at common doesn't really matter. It's like a standard Prismatic Vista is basically what we're looking at here. Yeah. Gingerbread Cabin... Uh, let me guess. When it enters the battlefield, untapped, create a food token. That's just not... Okay. That's cute. Idyllic Grange. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, untapped, put a 1-1 one -one counter on a creature. That's decent. Mystic Sanctuary. The only problem with these is that you have to have three other islands. This card's real good. Right. Uh, you may put target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard on top of your library. Is it that good? This card's busted. It's really... Like... like like modern legacy this card's busted this card is like eot fetch to get any in like to get an instant like this is this card's very good fetch? yeah you you polluted delta get your mystic sanctuary on instep take a instant from your graveyard oh, yeah, put it on top really of your library good. oh yeah you're like ancestral recall again. yeah this oh, yeah, card right. is yeah, very right. good this card is now this one is bonkers <sighs> yeah it's pretty good Tournament Grounds. This card seems great. This, like, this awesome. is a four of an any night deck. Yeah, Terminus. Terminus is a thing. Oh, wow. Putting, like, Miracles on top? Yep. Yeah, add one or add uh, Mardu mana. Spend this mana only to cast the knight or equipment spell. That's great. Like, at worst case scenario, you're just adding colorless, and this is... Yep. And it comes into play untapped. Yeah, this card's great. This is great. And finally, we're at the Witch's Cottage. 
Uh, you may put target creature card from your graveyard on top of your library. Not as good as putting an instant or sorcery on top of your library, but still probably decent. But we've uh, had, I mean, it's just a fetchable, fetchable mortuary mire. Thank you guys for watching the first half of our Throne of Eldraine set review. Be sure to check the uh, description for all the cards that we mentioned and the cards that we liked a lot. And, um, yeah, you can check me out at CoolStuffInc.com. have new articles going every Wednesday. You can subscribe on Twitch.tv slash Frank Lepore or Patreon.com slash Frank Lepore. Both of those links are in the description below. Slam those like and subscribe button, guys, and we will see you guys for part two. Thanks for watching. <laughs>